And so the madness began. We knew what they were going to do. The police always came at first light. There was no moon. Well, that was good for us. We used all the blankets from Limaloro to cover up bundles of grass, make him look like there was a mob camping down at the river. Jandamara and pick out all the places for the men with guns and gave them their orders. Me, I was in the back of that big cave in charge of all the women and kids. But not my Annie. They came creeping in, just like he said. He had two lots, one from the north end and he had one from the south. They settled down, watching our ghost camp, and we, we watched them, all waiting for the dawn. We knew if he fired his first shot, all the others would follow. If they had shot straight, all those police would have been dead before they knew it. The police, the station mob, Joe Bly, the whole lot. But it was that black tracker, Jim Crow, that saved them, coming over the top with those Queensland boys. He shot, put a hole in the sergeant's hat, but not in his head. That's how close it was. And you know, after that, I don't know. After that, after that it was like hell. Everybody shooting. All the sounds bouncing off the walls of the gorge. All the white cockies screeching. The women and children screaming and crying. <laughs> stopped. Everybody was shooting at shadows. All the Mangari got cover, our mob all hidden. The bullets were just bouncing off rocks. Must be, what, four or five hours, hey, Alf? Yeah, she's a stalemate, all right. First one on either side makes a move, he's going to get his head blown off. Yeah, at least we've got the shade. Must be pretty hot for those coppers over there. I reckon it was only Phillips got it. Yeah, I think so. Oh, shit! Hey! Put must have had something he needed to Nani. tell Jandamara. Yes! I got the bastard! Jandamara ran out to drag him in, but Ilumara waved him back. He knew he was gone. That's when Jandamara took his first bullet. He didn't even feel it. It was just. And then he just went. He was just standing there, crying, staring at Ilumara and crying. And the police got a bit of line on the cave and the bullet started coming inside. A woman and two kids were hurt, but he just stood there and they started charging across the sand just to get up close. Janamara! He stepped out and let off two shots. Then he took his next bullet. Us men in the other caves soon ran out of bullets. Then it was just Janamara and energy firing with Mayani reloading their guns. I started pushing all the kids back up, the women and kids back up the tunnel. It was a nightmare climbing through those rough, tiny tunnels. Everybody crying and scared. But they got through up to the top and clear away. Jandamara took another bullet through his shoulder. I was screaming at him to pull out, but he just kept telling me, hold on so the others can get a start. He was at the front of the cave. Three bullets he had already. He leaned against the rock with one hand, all bloody it was, and he kept firing and firing. He was hit in the leg and another one in the gut, but still he didn't stop. Till at last he collapsed, slid down and left his big bloody scrape on the rock. We thought he was dead. It was like a dream. But somehow we got him through that tunnel up to the top of the cliff and away over there to Tunnel Creek.
Joe, are you coming? Oh, for God's sake, what's he doing? Did you see him back there, Mr. Barnett? Dipping his finger in that pool of pigeon's blood. Taste 